As some of you already know, I'm building a whole new YouTube studio and because of that I will also need a new gaming streaming desk. And even though my previous one looked great, it soon became a mess because cable management is a pain. So I want a new desk partly because of that and also because it was an electric standing desk and I used it this many times. So with this new desk I implemented a false wall which hides all cables behind the desk and also the support leg. It's completely built with stuff from Ikea and the countertop is called coral bee. It has a nice wooden look which is pretty normal since it's well made out of wood but it's important to know that the inside of it is made out of particle board and if that sounds like a red flag to you just know that this is the inside of an IKEA linen table. It's literal cardboard on the inside. Now on the IKEA website under products, kitchen and then kitchen countertops you will find all the wooden and laminate looks. All these countertops are popular with gamers since they are very budget friendly and they come in a bunch of different styles. If you want to build a similar desk yourself but you want the cheapest option possible then a linen table will be your best option. I'm gonna use the Linman tabletop as the back of the desk as the false wall that hides the cables but you can definitely use it as the top of the desk too. In fact a lot of people are doing that just know that it's not that strong as you can see in this video. This cracks me up every time. <laughs> Now something else you could use is Owned Pro which is a graphics plugin for OBS Studio. It's the sponsor of this video and the base version of the plugin is completely free and after installing it you can find it under Tools and then Owned Pro. The free version gives you 5 overlay packs which rotate over time and you can simply install them by clicking on them and then clicking on Install Free Design to import the whole pack into your OBS Studio scenes. When you subscribe to the plugin you get access to their whole library of premium design which is a very big library to say at the least. I will link the tool in the description but I will also link my video in the cards where I go over everything that OwnPro has to offer. Again their link will be in the description. Now when you think about building a gaming or streaming desk what's the first thing that comes to mind? Alex drawers, right? Well, because of everything that's happening in the world, Alex drawers are pretty much sold out everywhere. So when I found out, like every manipulative mother would say, I wasn't mad, I was disappointed. So I could either be patiently waiting until they came back in stock, or I could look for an alternative, and boy am I glad I did. This drawer unit is called Mike. It looks extremely similar to Alex drawers, but the only big difference is the depth. The common IKEA desk setup consists of two Alex drawers plus an IKEA countertop. But if we add a support leg to that, which definitely is necessary, you can quickly see that adding a false wall to the back is pretty impossible. However, because this Mike unit is shorter, it slides right in between the drawers and the false leg. I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't looking forward to assembling it since IKEA still can be pretty tedious to put together but my dad loves this stuff so he helped me a bit and hey I just screwed in some screws and everything came together. All jokes aside it's not a lot of parts it's very clear in the manual so these are definitely not gonna be a problem if you want to buy them yourself. When positioning the drawers before adding the countertop to it I was trying to align everything perfectly by measuring everything and I messed up everything so once I put the countertop on it they ended up not aligning at all. Like it wasn't even close. <laughs> However it didn't really matter since I just put the countertop on the drawers so I could attach the support leg to it. The one I bought is called Ola. Of, I guess. It comes with a base plate, some screws and then the support leg itself which is adjustable in height. And I will link it in the description together with everything used in this video. Since there obviously were no pre-made holes for the screws for the leg, I drilled them myself and to make sure that I didn't go all the way through the desk I attached a small piece of tape to the drill. This way I knew how deep I could go. <laughs> That's what she said. And I also mounted the base plate as close to the border as possible so that the stand wouldn't interfere with the false wall sliding through. So then once the holes were drilled and the base plate was attached to the Lindman desk I aligned everything perfectly because as you can see I kind of messed it up before. Now to attach the countertop to the drawers you could either use double sided tape or you can take out the drawers and then just screw the countertop to the drawer unit from the bottom. Just make sure when you do this that you double check if the screw is shorter than the thickness of both of them combined 
for obvious reasons. I found this double-sided tape in a local hardware store and I will search something similar on Amazon and I will link it in the description together with everything mentioned in this video. So after I made sure that the countertop was aligned correctly with the drawers, I lifted it up, put my wallet underneath and then I just measured the tape and then cut off a piece. One of the sides on the tape is always sticky so I stick that on the desk already, then I took off the protector and then I slowly dropped the countertop on the tape. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, I would really appreciate it if you would give it a like because it helps a lot in the YouTube algorithm. And now the false wall is the tricky part because I wanted to make a video that everyone could just copy and make themselves. However, I got help from someone with a professional electric saw to make the Linden tabletop shorter. So if you can't find someone to do this for you, the easiest solution is if you are using the wheels for this drawer unit. They come included in the pack so when you add them under the drawer unit it will be higher and then when you add the countertop on top of it, the false wall will be just low enough to go under it. To attach the false wall to the drawer units, I also used the double-sided tape because this made it very easy. So then this is the final result of the desk. You can build this yourself with any other countertop, but in my opinion, this one looks super clean and it also doesn't look cheap, which some of the other ones do. Having these drawer units is also super useful for storage and they also have a beautiful white look with a tiny shape shine to it which makes them look great. And I know that I talk a lot about the false wall but it's just so convenient to be able to throw your cables behind the desk, not seeing them, not having to worry about it. I really don't get why not more people are doing this. So then when I finished the new desk it was finally time to move my streaming and gaming equipment from my previous desk to this one. The PC case is an Anzatex T H510 Elite but man this case looks amazing especially on this desk ask look at the synergy if that isn't the perfect match then i don't know what my pc is mostly aimed at video editing which automatically makes it good for streaming too the cpu is a ryzen 9 3900x the gpu is an rtx 2070 super and there is 64 gigabytes of ram in it these are the main parts i will add a complete list with all my parts that are in the pc in the description my main monitor is still the lg 38 gn 950 how could i give up this monitor this is a crazy one and man i've been loving it so much and for everyone who wants to stream with an ultra wide i got a lot of questions on that in the past when i stream with this monitor i adjust the resolution to 16 by 9 not in the obs or the streamlabs settings but in the windows settings then i just game with two big black bars but the resolution is perfect to import in obs and then send to the stream now because this monitor is so huge it's also extremely heavy and it wasn't easy to find a monitor arm that could support the weight but this was one of the only ones that could it supports cable management so you can just route your cables through the arm which allows for a very clean setup because once the cables reach the bottom of the arm they just go behind the false wall and you can't see them anymore it's from new star and i will also link it in the description in my previous setup i attached a power strip to the bottom of the desk but since i have a false wall now i could just drop the power strip behind it which felt amazing the second monitor arm is a cheap one and i also got it from amazon this is a very good budget option and if you're looking for one you can also find it in the description you just screw the back plate on the monitor and then you just slide it into the mount of the arm i'm going for a double landscape monitor setup because i tried the vertical one in the past few months and i didn't really like it i often watch a stream or a video on the second screen and when you make a video full screen on a vertical monitor things get kind of weird if you have three monitors then maybe one of them can be vertical luckily i had my dog during the filming of this video because it took a really long time and let's be honest here dogs just make you happier the second monitor is 27 inch 1440p and 144 hertz i bought it a long time ago the colors look pretty scuffed it also has huge burn-in issues so i don't really recommend this one the link will not be in the description if you really want to know it's a dell s20 2716 DG if I'm right. If only my fancy glasses made the colors look better, but they make it look even more yellow. Now, both monitors had a different height, so it was pretty awkward trying to align them, but in the end, I think that the basic setup turned out great. 
Then next was the GoXLR Mini. For some reason I think it's much cheaper in Belgium than in the United States. Maybe it's because the company TC Helicon is based in Denmark, I'm not really sure, I could be wrong. But this is a great device for live mic effects plus stream control. It allows you to control your stream audio separately with these sliders, then the extra audio controls with the mixer in their program. Everything together makes it an amazing compact device for streamers and hey if you're using an XLR mic you will need an audio interface either way so you can just as well get the go xlr mini my keyboard is a corsair k95 rgb platinum i would like to build a custom keyboard just like i mentioned in my previous video but a lot of people say that it's hard to get into that it takes a very long time that your first one doesn't turn out great so i'm not really sure if i want to do that maybe i could make a video building my first custom keyboard let me know in the comments if you watch that video and that's something every streamer wants or needs and I'll got the stream neck. The stream control it gives is amazing, it's super convenient and it also looks great. This is the XL version, there's also a normal size and then a mini. You can also make folders in the software so that gives you even more buttons. My microphone is a Rode Procaster, this is an XLR mic which means that you will need an audio interface. I used this Steinberg for a while but as you saw a few minutes ago I switched to the Go XLR mini. The mic arm is the Rode PSA1 which is perfect for this mic. However, I really want to mention that you definitely do not need an XLR mic, an audio interface, a boom arm, that's all just extra and buying such an expensive microphone setup should be something you do after buying lights, upgrading your studio, maybe getting some better stream graphics. To be honest, the Elgato Wave microphone is the perfect solution for a lot of streamers. It's not that expensive, it's $150 if I'm not wrong wrong it gives amazing stream control with the software that they are giving and it sounds just fine so if you're looking for a mic solution i would really advise you to get that mic and then once you've upgraded a bunch of other things and you still have money to spend to upgrade something else then you can upgrade to an xlr mic with an audio interface and then the mic will be heavy so you will need a better boom arm but upgrade other things first after getting a decent microphone like the blue yeti the elgato wave stuff like that. My mouse is the Corsair Scimitar, it has a lot of buttons for editing and I also use it for playing MMOs and because my mouse and my keyboard are both from Corsair I can easily change both of the RGB colors easily in the same software which is great. The lights I will use are the Elgato key lights and like the previous setup I will use the multi-mount solid arm to attach my camera to one of the lights. This is some footage from my previous setup, I didn't install it on this one yet because I'm filming everything with my camera. I am super happy with the end result, the cable management, the clean wooden look. If you enjoyed this video then giving it a like helps me a lot in the YouTube algorithm. I would really appreciate it, just click on the like button, it's really easy. Placing a comment helps me even more. And if you want to hear ideas from me, things I'm working on, you can follow me on Twitter or on Instagram, I will link them both in the description. If you want to see the building of the whole studio, I'm gonna make a video about that so you can subscribe for that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day.